Brains have been around for 60 million years. Shortly after the dinosaur disappeared, that's when cranes appeared here on Earth. And they've evolved into a very complex creature. And they've come right to the brink of extinction. Back in the 1940s, there were only 15 birds. Today, we had our first ever arrival of seven whooping cranes to St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. And these seven severely endangered birds flew into the refuge about 8.35 this morning. And we had a crowd of 2,000 very enthusiastic and freezing people that got to see the flyover event. We've been here since quarter of six, but I wasn't one of the first ones. Some people have been here since about five o'clock trying to help people park and make sure everybody's safe because it's pitch black at that time and very cold. Yesterday it was probably 25-ish. This morning it was closer to 20 or 18. I was watching my thermometer as I drove down and it wasn't going up <laughs> until the sun came up. There's two nonprofit groups that I understand work with the Whooping Crane Recovery Program, and that's Operation Migration, which is here, and another one is the Crane Foundation. Operation Migration is a nonprofit organization that was founded in the 1990s for the purpose of working with endangered species. We're uh, trying to uh, safeguard whooping cranes from extinction. Now, one of the problems, of course, with whooping cranes is if you try to reintroduce them into their original range where they no longer exist, they won't migrate. They learn to migrate by following their parent and there's no parent generation using this migration route. So that's where we step in. We act as surrogate parents and we use our aircraft to teach them to migrate. So that's what it's all about. Between uh, Wisconsin and Florida, there's about 1,285 miles, of course, in seven states, and it's a, it's a long, slow process. The first migration in 2001 only took 48 days. Last year's migration, that was the shortest, last year's migration was the longest, and that took us 97 days. And today, with um, our arrival at the St. Mark's Refuge, we're on day 82. This is the first year in St. Mark's. Um, previously, the entire class or generation of the year went to the Chazawiska National Wildlife Refuge. Um, and we're excited about bringing at least some of the birds here to St. Mark's. It's a super refuge and a lovely spot. In fact, we've been calling it Crane Paradise. Here at uh, St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, we have what's called a release pen, and the, the process we go through between now and the spring when these birds go back to Wisconsin on their own is called a gentle release. Their wintering site here on the refuge um, is about a three-acre um, pen enclosure, no top net. Um, there's two nice ponds in it for the birds to practice roosting at night. They move in and out of that pen on their own, you know, they'll, they'll fly out in the morning and forage in the marsh and eat blue crabs and, and, and learn to be wild birds. And then at night uh, the costume handler will show up and they're very familiar with that and used to it, so they'll come back into the pen to see what's going on and they'll get, we feed them with a, a pelletized food that has some medication in it and uh, so they come back in for that food. I think there's um, at least two full-time researchers that stay with the cranes while they're here and they do supplement their their food with natural food they try to get them to look for fiddler crabs and blue crabs and things that would be found in a Wakulla salt marsh that are not found in a Wisconsin cranberry bond. Well one of the important part of this project is that we release wild birds not tame birds um, in order to do that we have an isolation protocol and a costume protocol so from the minute the chicks are hatched from the eggs. We try to isolate them from all things human and from human beings. And to do that, we wear these big baggy white costumes to disguise the human form. Um, we're covered from head to foot. They can't even see our eyes. And that's what we wear to work with them or anyone that's around them, including um, the pilots. We want to release wild birds so that when they see you or I dressed as this, they'll be frightened and take flight. And then one day in the spring, um, they'll just take off and they won't come back. And uh, we'll track them all the way north. A team from the International Crown Foundation, and Crane Foundation and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will track them north. And about, uh, we suspect that 80 to 90 percent of them will make it back to Wisconsin next spring. So. 
I think they just came out because this to them is just an amazing, amazing feat. But it's just finally they're here and just it's so amazing that they could even take these seven birds or 14 birds a thousand miles all the way from Wisconsin down to Florida. You know, it's just, it's incredible.